So today we will cover a lecture on types of diversity techniques in cellular system. The learning outcome from this lecture will be what are the various types of space diversity, what is maximum ratio combining diversity, what is the derivation of maximum ratio combining and equal gain combining diversity and polarization diversity. So as we have seen in the last lecture that in space diversity there are multiple receivers which are separated from each other in terms of spatial locations. So they are classified into three different types. One is selection diversity, maximum ratio combining and the other one is equal gain. We have seen in the last lecture that how we have achieved an improvement when we have implemented selection diversity. In selection diversity, out of all these multiple signals, only best out of them will be selected and given to the receiver. So in that particular case, the received signal is not as good as we got in the case of maximal ratio combining. Maximal ratio combining is the technique in which we are going to consider the contribution from all these signals from different multiple receivers. So in maximum ratio combining, if there are M diversity branches, then all these M branches are weighted with the variable gain GI, where I varies from 1 to M. And this gain is according to the received signal strength. And all these multiple signals after getting weighted with this gain will be co-phased so that we remove all these phase distortion and sum them together. So if you see in this particular figure there is an adaptive control that means if the signal at the detector is not up to the expectation then this adaptive control algorithm will be applied which vary the particular gains of all these diversity branches and then these all multiple signals will be co-phased and summed to give us the appropriate optimum signal to noise ratio. So let us consider this with one example. Suppose if I want to take the feedback from students then in maximal ratio combining I am going to take the contribution from each and every student and but i will give the weighting more to the student who have attended more of my class and if you see in the case of the selection diversity in that case i will take the feedback only from the best out of all the students so if you consider in both the scenarios the best optimum feedback that i will receive that is in the case of the previous case the same applies here. In maximum ratio combining technique, we'll get the best signal from all these multiple paths. But the drawback of this maximum ratio combining technique is that, that for getting the optimal signal to noise ratio, I have to consider the contribution from all the different multiple paths, which is a very complex scenario. So now let us see the derivation of maximum ratio combined. So if the voltage is Vi for each branch where I is from 1 to M, all these voltage are co-phased and then weighted with a variable gain Gi. So if each branch has a gain Gi, then the signal envelope Vm applied to the detector is Vm will be the summation of I1 to M Gi Vi that means all the sum of all these branches voltage weighted with a variable gain Gi and the total noise power applied to the detector if N average is the average noise power of each branch will be given by N total will be equals to N average summation I1 to M gi square because here we are talking about the power so power is energy square so that's why gi square so the signal to noise ratio at the detector will be given by signal power by 
noise power. The signal power will be given by the RMS value of the signal. So that means Vm by root 2 whole square. So that comes Vm square by 2. And the noise power is n total. So the for Chebyshev inequalities, this will be maximized. The signal to noise ratio at the detector will be maximized if Gi will be equals to Vi by n average. So, in this particular maximum ratio combining, we consider that the fading occurs according to the Chebyshev approximation. So, in that case, if we have to maximize the signal to noise ratio at the detector, this will be possible only if the gain is Vi by n average. So, putting this value in the signal envelope, we get Vm will be equals to summation I1 to M Gi Vi. So, putting Gi equals to Vi by n average in this first equation, we will get Vm will be equals to summation I1 to M Vi square by n average. Again, putting the same Chebyshev inequality equation in equation number 2, then the total noise power will be n total equals to n average summation I to M Gi square. So, putting Gi equals to Vi by n average, we will get this n total equals to 1 by n average summation i1 to m vi square. So, the maximum value of signal to noise ratio will be given from vm square by 2 n total. So, putting uh, 5 in place of vm square and putting 6 in place of n total. So, the signal to noise ratio maximum will be equals to summation i to m signal to noise ratio I. That means the maximum value of signal to noise ratio is actually the sum of all the signal to noise ratio of each. So, in maximum ratio combining, the signal to noise ratio at the output of the detector is simply the sum of the signal to noise ratio in each branch. So, the probability that all these signal to noise ratio maximum will be less than what is required at the receiver, that is a threshold value. So, that probability is given by signal to noise ratio maximum less than equals to the threshold value, which is equals to the limit 0 to threshold P SNR maximum, derivative of SNR maximum. So, integration is being replaced by summation. So, that means the average signal to noise ratio is some, simply the sum of individual signal to noise ratio from each branch in maximum ratio combining. So, next is equal gain combining diversity. So, we have seen in maximum ratio combining the signal to noise ratio that appears at the output of detector is superior in comparison to the selection diversity. But it comes with some complexity that we need a very complex uh, architecture for that. We need an adaptive control algorithm which is not possible in all the cases. So, so just to compromise on the signal to noise ratio marginally what we have done is we came with another technique which is equal gain combining technique in this the gain is not variable gain is fixed to unity and rest all the thing remain the same so what will happen in this case that the output of the signal to noise ratio that appears at the detector is somewhat similar what we have received in the case of maximum ratio combining but the output is marginally inferior uh, in comparison to maximum ratio combined. But it is superior in, in comparison to the selection diversity. So even if there are the cases where we are unable to detect the received signal from the multiple path uh, in case of selection diversity, we will uh, see this alternative as equal gain combining which in which there is a possibility that we will be able to accept the signal when most of the unacceptable inputs are coming from multiple parts. So next is polarization diversity. So we have seen the space diversity in which we have multiple antennas which are separated from each other in terms of a spatial locations. So but there is a practical problem with space diversity. It is not easy to implement in the case of base station because we don't have so much space available at the base station so that we can have a multiple antennas separated from each other 
with a certain distance. So there is another approach in which what we have done is we have divided the different antennas in terms of polarization angle. That means if if a signal is transmitted from the mobile, then it has only two polarization direction. Either it will be horizontally polarized or it will be vertical polarized. So we can get all these multiple paths if we have the two antennas with two different polarization uh, angle. So let us consider the theoretical model of polarization diversity in which there are two diverse antennas V1 and V2 and they are separated from each other with a polarization angle of plus minus alpha and if this mobile is moving in the direction uh, making an offset angle of beta with the main beam of the diversity antenna. So this is the polarization diversity. So the benefit of this is that we have reduced the number of antennas and these antennas are separated from each other in terms of polarization angle. So in polarization diversity the most important factor is the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient means if there are two different antennas, one is horizontally polarized antenna, other is a vertically polarized antenna, then if they are independent of each other, then there will not be any problem. That means if they are orthogonal, that means we'll get horizontal polarized signal from horizontal uh, polarization antenna and vertically polarized signal from vertically polarized antenna. So the correlation coefficient, that means how they are correlated with each other, is a very important factor in case of polarization diversity. And it depends on three different factors. First is polarization angle, the angle between how we are placing both these antennas. So that is plus minus alpha. Other important factor is the offset angle. Offset angle from the main beam direction of the diversity antenna. If you see in the figure that this beta is the offset angle that how this mobile is actually making an angle with the main beam of the diversity antenna and the third one is how the propagation path exists between the mobile and the base station so correlation coefficient between the two antenna will be high as the offset angle becomes larger so larger the angle between the mobile and the main beam direction, uh, then larger will be the correlation coefficient. And in other case, the correlation coefficient generally becomes lower as the polarization angle alpha increases. So if the polarization angle alpha increases, then in that case, the horizontal polarization component becomes very large. So the correlation coefficient will be less in that particular case. Thank you.